Welcome back to another episode of Grizzly True Crime. My name is Gisela Kay, and today we look at a major update in the case of Kylie Rodney. Now I know that no matter what school of thought you're in, whether it's crazy conspiracies, I mean like off the wall, or pure logic, right? That whole spectrum. We all knew this day was coming, right? Right? Especially with all the developments in the last week or two or so. We knew that it's going to be an accidental drowning. Now, I just want to, to that, what I want to say is, no matter what school of thought you're in, please know that you are welcome here on Grizzly True Crime. Share your comments below. Feel free to participate in the chats. In my own personal opinion, I look at what law enforcement says and what an autopsy and toxicology report says, and that is what I base my facts on. To me, this was what appeared to be a true crime case, and now it's a true accident case. It's a tragedy. A 16-year-old girl with so much potential, highly intelligent, extremely beautiful, musically talented, lost her life at age 16. And that was after an impulsive decision to attend this party. It's not like she planned for months to go to this party. In fact, that day she planned to go with her mom or to meet up with her mom in Reno for hot August nights. She'd made creme brulee with her friend Kate, she'd hung out with Megs, and then she impulsively decided, you know what, I am going to go to this party. Which was kind of like a senior's farewell party, and even though she wasn't by age a senior, she was a senior, because she graduated early. So she decided to go. And sadly, because she, according to everything we've heard, was drunk, and decided to drive, she lost her life. So for me, the number one lesson, you know, I learned this myself at a young age, right? Number one lesson always that people will tell you, and it's so cliched, but it's so important, is never drink and drive. You could lose your life, or you could cause someone else to lose their life, and it is something that should just, in 2022, we should not see that happen, right? Because we can just call Uber. There's so many apps. There's all these tracking devices. I mean, Truckee itself is a tight-knit community. I'm sure there would be, if there was just a friend. I feel so bad for Kylie because I still feel like, where were her true friends in that scenario? Why are you leaving your buddy in that state to dri- to even try to drive home by herself when you yourself said she couldn't even walk? By all accounts we heard about Kylie, she was in no state to drive. So then the buddy system has to be in place. Don't abandon your friends. It doesn't matter what age they are, whether they're 16 and not supposed to drink or whether they're 96 and beyond. Don't let anyone who is under the influence of whatever substance drive. That is, that is lesson number one that I would say. And I just really feel bad for Kylie that in that state she tried to get home. And in that state, even though we've heard all about the rocky road, you know, literally it's like going off that beautiful paved path onto this rocky road and everything, that even that, at that speed and the state she was in, one window down, the other two halfway down, probably to try to stay awake. I don't know if you've done that before, driving and then... Like, uh, from all my days of flying, oh man, um, I was an airline pilot, right? And if we flew all night, do you know how tired you are when you land, but then you got to drive home? So I would, like, wind all the windows down to try to stay awake just to drive home. So that's not even drunk or on any substance or anything. It's just so tired, so extremely tired, trying to drive home, all the windows down, just to let that fresh air in and music usually playing so you can just stay awake right so to think that one window was down the other two halfway down and through all of that on that rocky road on everything she still ended up driving into the water and we are yet to see what the vehicle's black box uh, comes up with right like at what speed she would have hit the water and all that kind of stuff it is devastating It's so devastating to think of. So please, if you partying or you out just even for a coffee and you see others partying and you see someone who's in no state to drive, trying to drive, please don't let them take their keys from them. They might get really angry. I've seen that happen too. Don't let them drive. Okay. So let's just quickly have a look here. Uh, Kylie, May Rodney, 
0901-2005-0821-2022. Her date of death is listed as that date because that's the day that she was found in her car and the day that she was declared deceased. Cause of death, accidental drowning. Toxicology, ethanol, nicotine, caffeine, cotinine, and THC were in her system. She was wearing the bodysuit, the green pants with a belt, the sneaker on her right foot. The left sneaker was actually off, but they found it in proximity to her and put it in the body bag as well. She was wearing the jewelry that law enforcement showed us to look out for. There was moderate decomposition, which also goes in line with what Jared from AWP said one might expect if someone spends, you know, two weeks in the water, there would be moderate decomposition, waterlogged, especially in fresh water like that. And they said she has a 17 tattoo on her lateral right hip. Now that one, see, little, little details like that. They will never stop bugging us because all this time we heard that the 17 tattoo was on her rib and now the autopsy says on her hip and I'm like, why? Why do these types of details, especially of course, if Jagger said he did it himself, why? Like I know, <laughs> in true crime, in this community, well in true crime communities, across the board, we want facts, right? We want detailed facts and sometimes, yes, I feel like when we get all these little bits of information and there's not much to go on, it's like, okay, but what are the facts? We're trying to decipher through all of that, like what the hell is going on here, right? So anyway, here you, you can see a little snippet from the autopsy cause of death, drowning. Again, if you want to hear the whole thing, all 18 pages read to you, go to Plunder. It's another channel I've linked in the description box below. Now, if you're anything like me, you're going to think back and be like, what was that all about? You know, it might bug you for months. Sometimes I'm still thinking about things in the Gabby Petito case. You know, I'm like, what was that? <laughs> so I don't know. For me, I just wanted to clear up some stuff in case it helps anyone else as well. So on top there, you can see a picture of the black tank top that was found between Prosser and Boca. For some time, it was ruled out as it's not Kylie's, okay? Then it came about again that like, but what if it is? Especially after AWP had showed us footage, the little snippet, the 10% they showed us of this triple A roadside assistant dude who's talking about Boca. Then it became a possibility again, but like, what if that was actually Kylie's tank top slash bodysuit? The bodysuit and tank top, very different. However, now we know from the autopsy report that Kylie was wearing the bodysuit, the green dickies pants, the belt, and the sneakers. Literally what she was wearing in the last scene surveillance footage. So that tank top, not Kylie's. The dude in the middle, his name is Nathaniel Kabakangan. He was arrested for overdosing a 15-year-old girl with fentanyl. So... Then people were speculating because Nathaniel's, then Nate, okay, that Kylie was dating this dude. Kylie was not dating this dude. She was dating some other Nate. You remember Jag is the ex-boyfriend. She was dating another guy in the community called Nate. But this guy's nickname would also be Nate. And so for a little time, we speculated, oh my word, was he at the party? Could he be involved at all? Did he provide drugs at the party? Could this be an overdose situation? Well, no. And there was no fentanyl in her system. Then the third picture I've got here is the speculation that law enforcement actually kind of put out there of saying they've got video footage showing a fight that happened at the party and they would love someone to come forward or people to come forward to tell them more information about this. So then we saw this one little snippet and we're like, oh my word, was this a fight club situation? Well, no. According to the autopsy, no injuries, no fights. Uh, that Kylie was involved in. Also, if we just read there, hours before the statement session, about 280 volunteers gathered at the TCRC for a search. Rodney's friend Magdalene Larson, who is one of the organizers, said the oldest of two was not in the right stage to drive herself that day. I don't know how she knows that because she left the party within 10 minutes, but okay, we know there's no way she could have gotten herself out of there if she was drunk. Well, that's true, especially now. She didn't get herself out of there. She literally drove herself into the water. That is so sad. The roads in and out are too hard, she said. 
With how drunk she was, she wouldn't have been able to navigate them. Mags left within 10 minutes with her boyfriend. Sammy left, saying she was too inebriated, I'm going to find myself another ride. So how sad is it that Kylie drove herself into the water when all her friends knew she couldn't drive. She was in no state to drive. She adds that they had plans to get together this weekend and does not believe her friend ran away. We have reason to believe she might have left that party spot to go to another campground with a smaller group of people, said Marika Vick. All signs point that somebody took her and probably dragged her and has her. So, of course, none of that turned out to be true. Remember, whether it's usually, obviously, this is grisly true crime. We talk about true crime cases, and I cover missing persons cases. Missing persons cases don't always turn out to be true crime cases. But in all of these cases, we look at at least four plausible scenarios, and as time goes on and we get more information, we narrow down the possibilities, right? So an abduction, it wasn't... Uh, Somebody drugging her, nope, based on the toxicology report. And somebody having her, nope, not that either. Remember that TikTok dude that was like a serial killer? Like he was saying something about serial killing and he's got Kylie in the basement. Yeah, that's also, that was total BS. Okay, and then let's uh, circle back around to this triple A roadside assistant dude. I really wish that AWP would release the rest of the footage so we, at least we can see it in hindsight and try to make sense of it and know okay so that's someone completely different obviously obviously it wasn't kylie the next day at 11. that threw us all for a loop we're like what like that was a crazy story right so obviously whoever he saw in a silver suv at boca maybe it was someone that had been at the party or been partying around there some kind of you know, local, but not Kylie, and not Jagger, man, so I don't know, I don't think we'll ever see it based on the statements uh, AWP's made on the community tab, um, but man, I wish we would see it, you know, just so that we know, what was that all about, because they said there's 90% that they didn't show us of this, uh, this guy's statements, which they vetted and believed were credible, but now, given the situation and the information we've learned, yeah, no. It unfortunately wasn't, it had nothing to do with Kylie, right? Now, this picture right here, from day one, this picture really bothered me. Because this picture to me was always BS. I don't think that this picture was from the party. On the right-hand side there, what do I have there? The strap sticking out there so obviously from everything we know now kylie was not strapped into the back of this vehicle of hers this strap might literally be you know one of those um extension straps like if you're not tall enough to reach the top once the, once you open the we call it the boot what do you guys call it again it's like the the cargo area the trunk right to pull it down it could be a strap like that it could have just you know maybe in because there was alcohol in the car, right? Sammy was saying they were going back um, to and from the car to get alcohol out of the car. So maybe it was open. And before Kylie left, she just slammed it shut and maybe the strap got stuck like this. I don't know. But now we know that that strap is probably nothing sinister, right? I know there's some of you that's still going to be like, sinister. <laughs> I'm not here to try to convince you. I'm just sharing the news from today. Then... There's just a few more things. This saying last seen there at 1 a.m. Obviously, it wasn't 1 a.m. It was around 12.33 a.m. would be when she hit the water. So last seen around 12.25, 12.30. Then there was a Facebook post that said, Can anyone rule this out? Two days ago on the neighbor's APP, a topless female was being chased by a Honda CRV and was pulled back into the vehicle two hours away in Sacramento, California. Kylie drives a Honda CRV. Her tank top was possibly found at the scene down the road. Timestamps could be off due to the camera clock being accurate or inaccurate. So, can anyone rule this out? Yes. So, that was not Kylie. Then the searches wow, 19,000 hours and all that. They really focused their searches on the boat ramp. You could see all the footage and everything was like really focusing on that boat ramp area because it's the most logical area also that a car could go in. Man. But, uh, yeah, there's not really much to rule out there except that when they said that they've 
cleared Prosser, that they've searched extensively, that helicopters could see the bottom of that reservoir, and all of that. Well, no, the car was in there. It actually wasn't, it shouldn't have been cleared completely because the car was in there. Can you believe it? That after all that time, the car was literally there and so close to where a phone last pinged. Wow. And then I know we've already ruled this out as a picture from the party. This is apparently a picture from a party in Reno. But the picture is unfortunately burnt in our minds as the party, but it's not the party. And if we look at the picture on the right hand side of Sammy, I mean, a lot of things that she said just don't add up. They just do not make sense, which is why we red flagged it. And it will always bug me. Some of the things she said will always bug me, no matter what. It's just like, can you imagine if Sammy hadn't taken the mic and said she's going to filter tip, she's talking to teenagers, she's leading the investigation. She said that once, like what? Um, if she had not done that, and if we didn't hear about this triple A guy and all the things that AWP thought happened, right? Put those two things just aside. Damn. You know, it just would have been a lot simpler to try to figure out what was really going on in this case, right? Because what she says, the call at 1236, the car having a sunroof, drinking out of the same cup the whole night, going around like a little pear, all this stuff. The millions of calls a day that law enforcement was getting over a thousand tips, like all this stuff was just like, what an exaggeration, right? Anyway, it's just strange. It will always be strange. We see it in every case. There could be strange characters in every case and sometimes taking the spotlight. It happens. And then there's a picture there of Kylie's laptop, the Checker TV got out. I will never understand why law enforcement just left all that stuff at the bottom of that reservoir. I don't get it. I don't know why that would be the case. Why not just get everything else, even for just so the family can have it. It's just weird that all this stuff, can you imagine what else is under there actually? You know, um, Doug from AWP actually once said that bodies of water are always, you know, filled with things. He even said decay and items and things. I'm like, whoa, that's actually quite a scary thought to think how much stuff must be at the bottom of reservoirs, lakes, in the ocean and everything, right? Oh my word. But with the, with this case, how high profile this case was, I don't understand why they just left all that there, right? But at least somebody got it out. Some questions that I still have would be, for example, why did some adults in the community tell teenagers not to come forward? Was that just because, don't get yourself in trouble now, you're going to start college. Don't tell them what you were doing there. Don't say that you were underage drinking or taking drugs or anything like that. Maybe that's all it was, right? But that still sucks that adults in the community said, don't say a word to law enforcement because they were struggling to get information out of people, right? So why were people so scared to talk? especially if they knew nothing. If everyone was so drunk and high and no one actually saw Kylie go into the water, why were they all being so suspicious and quiet, man? That will just add to the speculation, right? What are we supposed to think? Kylie's mom said that there were stories of when Kylie arrived and there were also stories of the end of the evening, but there were no stories about Kylie leaving. So that also is just strange. It'll always be strange that out of two to 300 people, Nobody saw Kylie leave the sanctuary and drive into that water. Whoa. Okay, so here are some lessons that I'm going to take from covering this case. Number one, there is great power in social media, but it's to be used responsibly because it can actually be really destructive, right? We see it in many cases, but... It can really be destructive in the sense that people get doxxed, people get death threats, people actually get harmed. So we have to do our best, whether it is a true crime case or a true accident, when someone loses their life, it's an absolute tragedy, to do our best to maintain the dignity of the victim and to protect the family of the victim because they get harassed big time, harassed and bullied and doxxed and threatened and all that stuff. So yes, I do believe that there's power in social media because without this case having been so high profile because of all the social media coverage, 
AWP wouldn't have gone out there and Kylie would still be in the water. That's a very scary thought. Another lesson is that law enforcement has the power to minimize speculation. And I really wish we saw more of that in this case. As we can see, for instance, in the case that I'm covering now, the Quentin Simon case, a 20 month old little boy who went missing and now law enforcement has said that they believe he's deceased. They have not found his body, but they've named the prime suspect as his mother. All of that type of information, just coming forward with it, really stopped rumors in its tracks. Before speculation got too wild, before things got too crazy online, they addressed everything. They said what they're doing in the investigation. And I just feel like in this case, a lot of times rumors and speculation could have been minimized with law enforcement's help. If they could have said, for instance, no, the AAA roadside assistance dude story is completely false. It does not fit the timeline at all based on information we have. It could have really helped, right? Things like that. I mean, they haven't even addressed this uh, fire cam footage to say, you know, we hadn't checked those cameras. Um, we're very sorry about that. Or they didn't say, those cameras are completely, it's, it's fake, it's false. So now what do we have? Rumors all over. We have got that it's fake. We've got that it's real. We've got people debunking it. People that know that it's completely logical. It's like, it's right there. It's owned by California, but I get it. I get it. All schools of thought are welcome. I'm just like, man, if they could just say something, it could really help, right? Another lesson, which is something I've just said a little earlier, is that not all missing persons cases will turn out to be true crime cases. And if you are generally a consumer of true crime content, let's not anticipate that every, and let's hope not, that missing persons cases will turn out to be true crime cases. Because sometimes they don't, and then some people want to remain stubborn and stay in, no, but it has to be, it has to be true crime, because... I don't know, that's kind of the narrative they're used to or are expecting and it might even feel disappointing or something if it isn't. But sometimes it could just turn out to be a true accident or a tragedy or the person is found, which is the best news ever. When a missing person is found safe and well, that is the best. When they reunite with their families, oh my word. Another lesson is that mental health is fragile in these scenarios. And I mean for families of missing persons or victims of crime for everyone in their community, everyone who knew them, but then also for content creators and the audiences across the board. And in that, we must just know that weirdos do not equal to criminals because there's no doubt <laughs> that Truckee's got a vibe, you know, it's a vibe that maybe we're not so used to. So, but that doesn't mean that the whole town is corrupt and that it's all a cover-up and that's all right. So I just feel like considering mental health, you know, in all of this is pretty important. And even for you, for you yourself, to just be mindful of how much content you're consuming that could affect your mental health, right? Um, to just always make sure that you're okay too, because I know these cases can take us down rabbit holes. And sometimes people get stuck in those rabbit holes and refuse to come out of them. So as I've said before, a quote from a wise friend, I can go down those rabbit holes with you, but I can't stay there. Mostly also for mental health. We cannot stay there and we'll be there forever. You know what I mean? Here's another lesson. There is honor in silence, which is what Kylie's mom said. But there is also honor in saying I was wrong. So remember when law enforcement had to literally stand there and the sheriff, the Nevada County Sheriff had like a red face and, you know, he looked a little bit angry and a little bit embarrassed. Those are totally normal feelings given the scenario because AWP came in there after law enforcement had spent 19,000 hours looking for Kylie and within less than an hour, they found Kylie and her car. That could feel humiliating it could make one feel angry and all of that but yet they stood there and they say well yeah we tried our best we welcomed them in and and they found kylie which at the end of the day that's the goal right so to that i will say while we did explore some rabbit holes and what i believe to be plausible explanations for what could have happened to kylie in all the stages of her being missing 
I was wrong in the sense that for me, an accident, just Kylie driving into the water herself was the least likely outcome. So that means if I think it was the least likely outcome and yet it is the outcome that happened, I was wrong. My personal feelings and opinion was way off on this one. I also want to say that there are still, there is still the possibility of lawsuits or legal proceedings in this case. So even when there is a tragic accident, one might still see family file a wrongful death lawsuit. For instance, if they know or could find out who gave Kylie Rodney the alcohol or the drugs, the THC that was in her system, right? The weed. So they, they could still be legal proceedings. And if they are, are you with me? We back the family. And the last lesson I want to share before I go and leave you with a video that I prepared for you is remember this. You do not need to take an IQ test to start a YouTube channel. Anyone with an internet connection and a cell phone can start a YouTube channel. So just bear that in mind. Choose wisely what you fill your time and your mind with because it can be detrimental to your mental health. I myself am a very curious person. And so I watch a lot of content too, as well as making a lot of content, right? So just keep that in mind. And in certain circumstances, just like lower your expectations because literally anyone, you got a phone, you go and sit at a restaurant, they've got Wi-Fi, you can start a YouTube channel. And if you do happen to start a YouTube channel, just write down for yourself what your mission is. What's your mission statement? What do you want to achieve on your channel? What's the goal? What is the purpose? Make it clear so that you know what you're doing, right? For me, the mission is to raise awareness in missing persons cases and to figure out that if a person's found, do we need to help fight for their justice? Is this now a criminal matter? Do we have to, what do we do? Can we now raise awareness? For instance, look at the Sean Doherty case. In that case, if you haven't checked it out yet, I'll link that in the description box as well. Uh, wow, there are botched cases as well, or there are cases where family really needs our help to put the pressure on, the social media pressure on law enforcement to either relook at a case or to actually fight for the victim's justice. And sometimes you'll see me covering a case for a long time because the family so desperately needs our help. Look at the Daniel Robinson case. This is a year and a half later and he still has not been found. So there we need to keep the pressure on. We need to keep sharing his case. Uh, if you didn't know, David Robinson, his dad, has got a channel called Please Help Find Daniel. So go check it out because he does weekly Q&As. He's on there a lot sharing as much information as possible about his son's disappearance. That is an unsolved missing person case, and there are so many of those in the world. It is so sad to think how many people go missing. I mean, if we just think about the timing of this um, Kylie Rodney case, all the other cases that happened at the same time, I mean, we just found out that Jolissa Fuentes also died in a tragic accident. She disappeared on August 7th, same weekend. And it, it took a little bit of time because, of course, <laughs> most of social media, including myself, we were very busy covering this Kylie Rodney case. So my mission on this channel is to help as much as possible to raise awareness for missing persons cases, to protect the victim, whether it's crime or accident, and their family. That is my goal. So if you are part of this community, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for subscribing, hitting the bell so that you know when I next upload or go live or have a short for you or something. Thank you to all my members, to my patrons, to everyone who supports the work that I do. And I spend literally 90% of my time creating content for this channel. I also have a second channel called GNT, which you can check out if you want to. And then of course, if you are on Patreon, you know what I'm doing behind the scenes. And to that, I will say before I play this video that I made for you, I am gonna be taking patrons out. I usually take you guys most weekends. This weekend, we're going out for an espresso martini and for a coffee, okay? So make sure that you're, you check your inbox because you will get notifications of videos coming out, a live stream, things like that. And if you want to join and support me on Patreon, then the link is on grizzlytruecrime.com. Actually, it's the easiest place to find all the links to everything I do. 
Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you for all your kind and considerate comments. Big shout out to the moderators who in this case, when chats got absolutely out of hand and wild, they were there making sure that we keep this community grizzly, as I say, which means kind and considerate and respectful, especially knowing that family oftentimes watches. We've seen this in many cases. I'm still in contact with many family members of cases that I have covered and I always consider them. So thank you so much, mods. I really, really appreciate it. Okay, and now I'm going to be quiet. I will see you guys if you are on Patreon soon over there. If you're watching this from the future, then I would have seen you for the next upload or whatever. And please stay safe. Don't drink and drive. Make sure you have your buddy system in place. Don't be afraid to call your friend's parents. If you think that like, whoa, we need an intervention here. Yeah, we need help. We need a parent to pick them up. Call Uber, do something. And most of all, stay safe, but enjoy every day because you just don't know when it's going to be your last. Thank you so much. How if they scanned it, how would they miss that? So I'm assuming it's nothing because they did have dive teams, but I don't want to be the guy that just says, oh, it's nothing because it doesn't look like a car. Right there with the red thing? Yes, sir. How in the f could they have missed it? That's impossible. 18 different agencies. Over 19,000 man hours have been putting, put into this. Not a zero vehicle was found in this reservoir. That is giving me a really weird reading. It looks just like a car. It looks just like an SUV. And it looks like it's giving me some misreadings the way a newer car would. So amazing scan. Great job, man. Great, great job scanning that. Um, the 16 year old was attending a party with hundreds of others at a campground near Lake Tahoe on Friday, August 5th, when she was last seen around midnight. Her phone, last pinged around 12.30 a.m. Saturday morning, according to police, showed her location near Prosser Lake, in the vicinity of the party. Investigators believe the phone ran out of battery or was shut off. Extremely concerned. I, this is it's an absolute nightmare. This is every parent's nightmare. Friends discounting the possibility Kylie tried to drive home on the dark campground roads and accidentally went into the lake. Friends discounting the possibility Kylie tried to drive home on the dark campground roads and accidentally went into the lake. Right here is where they found her vehicle. So watch this. And this is this is unbelievable that a camera caught this. And right, right now it's 12 33 ish and look at that watch this goes right into the water right off the edge there it's actually in the water at that point i think it's a tragic ending but overall um it's a better ending than what we were facing a few days ago when we had no idea where she was still really so new that we don't know what to think i think all of us that were texting last night just want to be there for the family and want to we want to help we just don't know how it's just hard to think about that somebody you saw like a couple weeks ago is just not here anymore it's, if you met kylie she was like really honest and she was like really badass she was like you like saw her and you were like she i want to be her like she is so cool she's strong like she didn't let anybody like overpower her like it's like we all like put so much like into like going to look for her and like putting up posters and then just the fact that she's just like we all know that she's just not around anymore it's just it just kills the whole community it's just it's hard we had hopes that we would find her we didn't know you know under what circumstances we were concerned about abduction for the most part at that after you know Nine, ten days went by, we were starting to think something. Surely she was being held against her will. And so there's a comfort in this to know that she was not being held against her will. It's impacted the community greatly, but what the community has done is pulled together and supported the families um, in an amazing way. Actually, um, my granddaughter said, I really didn't have an idea of what community meant before this, and now I know. Kylie is an extremely beautiful, talented, musical savant. Still really so new that we don't know what to think. I think all of us that were texting last night just want to be there for the family and want to, we want to help. We just don't know how.
I'd say this is probably the, the worst thing that has ever happened in this community in my 45 years that I've lived here. Small towns, big hearts. That's us. You know, what if this was your daughter? What if it was your sister, your cousin, your best friend? Would you want that weighing on your conscience for the rest of your life? First, they think they found her tank top. She wasn't wearing a tank top. She was wearing a black body suit. There's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Secondly, a vehicle matching Kylie's vehicle with the same plate found in South Reno in front of a, a gated community in South Reno with a male who was with her and who was acting erratically. False, 100%. Mm -hmm. Fake news. Mm -hmm. And there is fake news on social media. Mm -hmm. The majority of what you read on social media is fake news, believe it or not. Good afternoon. The FBI has and continues to take um, instances where the most vulnerable are in our society are victimized. And we are very happy that we're able to come alongside and partner with Classic County Sheriff's Department, Nevada County Sheriff's Department. We've been part of the full investigative team. Uh, as of today, we had approximately 50 other agents up here helping run down uh, some of those priority information and leads that have come through. Um, and we are going to continue to partner with both agencies as we see this through. So thank you for your time. I leave you with a point that I want everyone to know. There's a lot of information coming out there, and a lot of people are asking questions. If you have to ask yourself whether or not you should share some information about what happened, you've already answered the question. No information is too small. Every piece of information we're going to put together to build a puzzle, to continue to push forward, to allow the machine to turn, we're not going to back down. We're 100% committed, and I appreciate the community coming out here. Um, please. Keep the family in mind. Realize that when you inundate them with a lot of social media stuff that a lot of it vets out not to be true, we need you to push that information to the tip line. Let the detectives do the work. Let this family try to work through this process they're going through. So I want to appreciate, again, my partners in this uh, endeavor, and uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you. But primarily, we're look, looking at the last known location. We're expanding uh, beyond there. Like you said, we're not ruling anything out. And that's why we're kind of pulling out all the stops. If this was a hiker and they were known to be in an area, that would be a search and rescue effort because we're, we're searching a very specific area. Because we don't know, we just have that timeline, we're considering everything. Now, I want to send a shout out to Grizzly True Crime. I mean, they're doing uh, what I think is exceptional work on uh, the uh, Kylie Rodney case out in California. I think... Uh, She's really doing, uh, I believe her name is Gisla. Let me know if I screw that up. But Gisla is doing, and her husband is uh, doing extraordinary work and really uh, covering this case in a comprehensive way. Divers set out early this morning searching in the waters of Prosser Lake. Nevada County Sheriff's Captain Sam Brown verifying new information for Fox 40. Angela, can you or the officers behind you confirm that her phone, Kylie's phone, the last ping was near the water? Yeah, the, the ping for the data points and everything were near the water. Uh, it's hard to tell an exact pinpoint or anything like that, but uh, just as much on land as it was on water. A member of the dive team tells Fox 40 they searched in the areas where Kylie and her vehicle could possibly be. 57 feet is its deepest point. So far, they've found nothing. She could be anywhere in the country at this point, so... I definitely feel like that in this current situation that she's safe. I don't know where she is. We don't have anything to go off of at this point, but I fully believe that she's alive and well, and I fully believe that the two of us, three of us, or other people are going to bring her home safe. So at about 12.36 a.m. in the morning, I saw um, a call from her, and she so she called me. I was on my way home from the party, and I was... She was supposed to give me a ride home, but I had already told her I didn't need a ride home. And I answered it, and she said, hey, where are you? Like, do you still need a ride home? And I was like, no, I already told you this. Like, we're all good. Like, I'm in the car right now. Like, 
thank you so much. And she was like, yeah, of course, love you, good night, like, I'll see you tomorrow. And I was like, okay, love you, see you tomorrow, be safe. And then after that, nobody has had any contact or sighting of her. Early Saturday morning. She was having a fun time at a party, just being a teenager. Everything she drank, I drank out of. And there was nothing that seemed off about her. We were going to leave together because later in the party I had asked her if uh, she could give me a ride home. And then I realized that she was too intoxicated to give me a ride home. So I decided to try and find a different ride. Like a lot of drugs were involved, like drugs that we don't typically have just in parties. Um, and our parties also just aren't normally that fit. I think it's totally possible that somebody could have taken her and maybe to offer to drive her home. Friends discounting the possibility Kylie tried to drive home on the dark campground roads and accidentally went into the lake. Yeah, no, she's driven out there multiple times. She was going she's going to go camping out there later that day. She has lived in this town for pretty much all of her life, so she she knows this area like the back of her hand just like most of us do. I'm not leaving until I find my friend. There has been a lot of video provided and some of it uh, had to do with a fight that occurred at the party. Detectives right now are asking for any additional video that you have. Officials would not confirm if Kylie was involved in that altercation. of volunteer divers who travel across the country solving missing persons cold cases will be joining that search officially tomorrow morning. But when the search makes national news, reaching all forms of media across the U.S., sometimes people with specific skills realize they may be able to help. Uh, you know, the call came through. We heard it loud and clear by thousands of requests. Uh, we are in communication with the Placer County Sheriff's Department. They're very happy in welcoming us in. Uh, we're going to utilize our unique skill set as well as the search tactics that we've developed that have made us successful. And they've decided to help find answers for Kylie Rodney, her family, her friends, and everyone wondering where she is. Investigators from multiple law enforcement agencies, including the FBI, so far have not been able to locate 16-year-old Kylie. You know, the, the biggest thing in all of this is she was at a party that had 200 to 300 people. Someone knows something. And that's, that's, that's a really accurate assessment to make. I just want my daughter home. I just want to give her a hug. I just want to know where she is. And, and With the help of the community, we're going to find her, and everybody has been incredibly supportive, and um, that we are going to find Kylie with the help of our community, but and only with else. the help of our community. They've searched into the forest, they've searched into the water, they've searched in every single place, and there's no tire tracks or anything from what I know. Yeah, so there have been dive teams sent in, and I can pretty much only say that they've done thorough, thorough searches through the waters, through the lakes surrounding. They are searching the waters. They are searching the campgrounds and everywhere related lakes that are near because Boca and Stampede are two reservoirs that are near there as well. Extensive searches to points that you wouldn't yeah. even believe the FBI and those people oh, I, who they are going. I, I, um, she was not being driven home and she was not driving. Just sorrow and hope and She's Plus very stretch. strong, very yeah. strong woman, but who can be strong? All I can think of is the broken heart emoji <laughs> yeah. that we all keep texting back and forth. We all know about that one. Kylie definitely was special. She meant so much to so many people. Not that every child that's a loss is special, but it's devastating. So uh, the family had asked active social media. So yeah, yeah definitely. We had a guy with her, she was asking me really weird questions, like in the sense of, how do you put on your seatbelt? <sighs> we need to go get I'm a firm believer in second chances. However, some things don't deserve forgiveness. Maliciousness does not deserve forgiveness. Cold-blooded, cold-heartedness, taking the daughter, taking the life of a 16-year-old deserves zero forgiveness. For a silver vehicle, her Honda CRV is silver in color. Helicopters have stated that they could see the bottom of this reservoir. We've had multiple different extreme levels of in this reservoir. I'm confident in what they've done. However, and not to sound cocky, but if we haven't searched it, it hasn't been searched. That's our motto so that we stay efficient and protect the integrity of everything we do as we're walk working for families and law enforcement. So I'm here. This just got sent to me. I cannot name who did, but it says, 
Um, the Truckee Facebook missing persons groups are on fire with speculation about what happened to Kylie. Thing is that some of it may not be speculation. It may be real clues as to what happened. The party, 200 plus, fact is there was a lot of drinking and drugging, reported fights, some disturbing behavior between Kylie and a girl named <laughs> minutes before the party, the party suddenly breaking up. And then cars started flying out of the parking lot. Something bad happened and all the kids' parents told them not to get involved. You may want to keep in mind that there's a possibility of what happened to Kylie could be more sinister. And there was a panic. I knew. You know, I, I feel the same way. A kid goes missing after attending a party of 200 to 300 people. There's always, most likely, something that happened at that party. Someone knows something. Someone possibly did something. It's an accurate and fair assessment to make. Not only one person knows, but multiple people know. It's probably nothing, this... but it was a big shadow. It, it, it's something. Isn't that weird? I mean, it's just big. Confirm, confirm. I see the vehicle and the license plate. We have just found Kylie's vehicle over. She's in the back of the vehicle. Okay. She's not in the driver's seat. It looks suspicious to me. Yeah. Vehicle's upside down. Some of the one we window is halfway down. One window is all the way down. Whew. Call the authorities. So tell me what you believe is suspicious about what you found. I mean, let's just start at the beginning. You know, we're, we're talking about a, a, a 16 year old that just graduated, highly intelligent, uh, possibly on her way to med school, uh, disappears from a party of upwards of 400 children and ends up being found, you know, several hundred yards away. Uh, that in itself is completely alarming and nobody saw anything. Uh, the, the take into consideration the area where her vehicle was found is not a wrong turn road. We're talking about a very beautifully paved road that leads in and out of this campground that she was extremely familiar with. And where her vehicle ended up was on a very hard, sharp left turn onto a dirt road that is rough. It is extremely rough. The, the, the ruts in this road I mean, it literally takes almost a, you have to have a four wheel drive vehicle to get down this road. There's no mistaking it. Once you put once you are put onto this road, you know exactly where you're at. You're, you're, you're on the wrong path. So the, the fact that the vehicle ended up where it is completely suspicious. Um, you know, there's a lot of ifs in regards to where she was located within the vehicle being suspicious as well, um, which I find suspicious. Uh, the whole thing just doesn't add up. You know, there's, there's a 16 year old just doesn't disappear with that many people around and nobody knowing anything and no one willing to talk. It's a huge red flag. Now to this, more than a month after the body of a 16 year old was found in Placer County, a reservoir there, the coroner's office has released Kylie Rodney's cause of death. Yeah, Nevada County deputies say Rodney drowned in her vehicle in Prosser Reservoir back in August. The coroner's report did not find any other factors contributing to her death. It says she was found in the cargo area of her SUV. There was no evidence of foul play. She disappeared on August 6th, prompting weeks of searching after she had been last seen at a large party with hundreds of other teens at the Prosser family campground cause drowning it said the decedent drowned in a lake while inside her vehicle I have recently reviewed the pathologist's final report of autopsy which listed the cause of death in this case as drowning there were no other significant contributing conditions listed I conferred with detective Saunier and he told me there was no indication of foul play regarding the criminal investigation into the death of Kylie. The manner of death in this case has been determined to be accidental. This is what it is, cause of death drowning, and it looks like it was an accident. I mean, if they would have just done the simplest thing, man, the simplest thing, once they found Kylie, which was a great thing that they did, once you did that, leave it alone. Shut up. Your job is done. We appreciate it. 
and they would be nobody would be saying anything bad about them. I would be if anybody said anything bad about them, I would be up here calling them idiots. So um, at this point, what I'm thinking, you know, if if, if we all feel this way, if they feel this way, there may be other people who feel this way too, and so. Maybe we can use this opportunity to, rather than keep on asking these guys, you know, we can go to our state legislatures, we can mm -hmm. do things that might be actually more helpful and more effective in changing that, even if it doesn't change it today, even if it doesn't change it tomorrow or, or for Kylie at all, maybe it could change it, you know, for someone else, and, and that can be a positive effect too, but um, 